our French and foreign participants dream on the beauty of Malaysia's wildlife. Dr. Benoit Goussens will share us with us his expertise and experience as the director of Ginau Garang Field Centre at Kinabatangan in Sabah. Ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, thank Dr. Goussens. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam MC. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to show you the, the beautiful wildlife that we have in, in Sabah. Uh, I'm going to try to be uh, very honest in uh, what we are uh, living in, uh, in Sabah and uh, what are the conflicts that we are encountering uh, with the agriculture, but not only the agriculture, uh, and also the positive thing that uh, agriculture is bringing to, uh, uh, to wildlife conservation. So this is a presentation I'm doing in, in, uh, together with my, my colleagues from the Sabah Wildlife Department, Dr. Santil Valnathan and the director of the Sabah Wildlife Department, uh, Dr. Lawrence Susanbu. Um, the question I'm going to ask is, is, are we really harmonizing wildlife and biodiversity conservation uh, with uh, national development? Are we really doing the right thing? And uh, I hope that during my presentation I will be able to respond to part of this question. Uh, for those who don't know uh, Sabah, Sabah is located in uh, the northern Borneo. It's one of the two Malaysian states of uh, Borneo. Uh, it's located above uh, Kalimantan, which is the uh, Indonesian part of Borneo, and it is next to the, the uh, Sultanate of Br the Brunei Darussalam. Uh, and as you can see at the, in the, the slide at the lower part, this is uh, where the palm, oil in, the palm oil plantations are located, uh, obviously on the lowland, uh, because this is where uh, they grow best. And um, in Sabah, uh, we have still more about 60% of the uh, forest cover um, in the state. And the uh, different types of uh, forests, obviously it's not 60% of uh, primary forest, uh, but this is, uh, this is still under uh, forest management, management units and uh, forest reserves and uh, national parks, such as, oh, sorry. Such as uh, Monkinabalu here or Crocker Ranch. And I'm working in this uh, really small um, sanctuary um, under the jurisdiction of the Sabah Wildlife Department, which is a, a corridor of forest, um, basically uh, isolated in the middle of uh, palm oil uh, plantations. All the white thing is, is uh, uh, palm oil plantations here. Yeah. So in Sabah, uh, most of the ecosystems are under threat. Uh, for example, in the place where I'm working and where my field center is established in the Lower Kinabatangan Wildlife Sanctuary, which is the biggest, the longest river in, uh, in Sabah, there is, uh, in some places, absence of uh, riparian forest between uh, plantation and main river. Obviously, the, this estate has not followed the law. Uh, which requires at least 50 meters of uh, riparian forest. Actually, we are fighting against this, this uh, estate right now, try to uh, get uh, some land back uh, for conservation and reestablishing forest. Um, here, you can see absence of buffer zone between plantations and uh, rainforest. Um, mangroves in, in, in Sabah, in the country, are also under threat. Uh, where mangroves are uh, cleared and uh, it affects uh, species like the proboscis monkey, which is endemic to Borneo. Um, you can find forest islands uh, and mostly on uh, slopes and uh, highlands, uh, which create high fragmentation, like here. This is also along the Kinabatangan, so you have this small fragment of forest uh, surrounded by palm oil plantations. And that's where orangutans uh, live, and you can see that they have adapted uh, to uh, s that kind of uh, fragmentation by spending more, st more time on the, on, the, on the ground, and we are catching a lot of pictures of uh, orangutans uh, using the ground, uh, using camera traps. Uh, we were talking, uh, Dr. Kala was talking about uh, palm oil mills. Uh, obviously, this, in the best world, 
uh, they, are, they have regulations to follow, but they're not only follow, always following them. And you can see one of the a small tributary in the Kinabatangan River where, you know, this is a pollution coming from plantations when they discharge uh, from their uh, palm oil mills. So obviously there are some really good plantations, they don't do that, but there's some also bad, and we suffer, we suffer from the, the bad, uh, the bad uh, people. Um, we can also observe uh, garbage dumping at plantation site, but also uh, at uh, villages, and this is increasing uh, pollution uh, of the river. And then we can go to the, to, to the wildlife, which is under threat, and that is using uh, these ecosystems. And uh, I'm going to go through a different uh, threat, habitat loss, and uh, resulting in, in conflicts with, uh, between human and wildlife poaching and uh, killings. So there will be a few pictures that won't be very nice, but uh, bear with me. Uh, these are the really nice pictures of the species that I'm working on in Saba. Okay, habitat loss and conflicts. We have uh, about 2,000 elephants in Saba, which is amazing. Uh, it's a large population. We find elephants only in the northern part of Borneo, mainly in Saba, the big Probably 85, 90% of the population of Bornean elephant is in Sabah, so we are very lucky to have them. But because of habitat loss and conflict, uh, we encounter these kind of uh, uh, damages uh, in the elephant population. Um, unfortunately, we have less than 10 to 15 Sumatran rhinos in Sabah. There are about 100 Sumatran rhinos in, Suma in Sumatra. So we have a population of about less than 200 uh, Sumatran rhinos left in the world, which is critical. And, uh, but Sabah is trying to do something about it. Uh, I recently published a, a paper on uh, genetics and the last stand of the Sumatran rhinoceros, um, asking the government of Malaysia and Indonesia to start mixing uh, their populations by exchanging individuals or putting them in, uh, uh, in, in semi-captivity and trying to, to uh, make them reproduce. Because this is the biggest problem for the Sumatran rhino, is isolation from each other. They don't mate anymore. So the, the Sabah government has agreed to send one of these last rhino that is uh, currently under uh, semi-captivity in one of the forest reserves, to send it to a Cincinnati Zoo in the US try to uh, meet, mate with uh, one of the females there. So we have some hope, but it's only a hope. Uh, in Sabah, we have also 11,000 orangutans, which is about a quarter of the population in, in the whole Borneo. Um, however, we are still losing orangutans. Uh, for example, in the Kinabatangan, we lost 300 orangutans in seven years. Uh, there are reasons. Uh, probably some of the orangutans are trying to uh, disperse. They, they can disperse through uh, palm oil plantations. We have seen that. We have seen uh, orangutan nests in plantations. It doesn't mean that they, they survive in plantations, but they can use plantations to, to, uh, to disperse to uh, another forest fragment. On the way, they might be unlucky, uh, but we don't know that. We need to do more research about this. Proboscis monkey, species endemic to Borneo. Um, my, my colleagues from Belgium probably remember Rasta populus. And uh, so they're also called uh, the, the Dutchman for their nose and not for their, their, the other appendix. Uh, and this proboscis monkey live mainly along rivers. Uh, and the Sabah uh, proboscis monkey population has been declining in the uh, recent years. And we, we have uh, scientific data to show that. And this is mostly due to habitat loss, because they are living along rivers and uh, in the lowlands. The second uh, threat is poaching. Um, and that's, that's not coming from the palm oil plantation. That's coming from people, um, and not only people working in plantations. It's coming from locals. Uh, it's coming from foreigners going to Sabah. But this is a real problem. And we have also government officers poaching. 
we have, we have shown it. Uh, this is uh, the director of the Sabah Wildlife Department who has been in the press stating that, which is very, very proud of him. Um, this is a, a picture of a hunter, local hunter, in a protected area in the, in the Kinabatangan Wildlife Sanctuary. So poaching is, is present, as you can see. Uh, it's present in, in also in Sumatra, and this is a real problem. Killings uh, are also happening. Um, Orangutan killings by palm oil workers in East Kalimantan. It's been, uh, it's been uh, uh, shown, and some cases have been filed. And uh, recently, in Sabah, we had 14 elephants who were poisoned uh, in central Sabah. Uh, it's been proved. Uh, we sent the samples to Australia and uh, we identified toxic uh, substances um, in the samples. And uh, we are now investigating and trying to find uh, the culprits. Our Minister of Tourism, Culture and Environment is, is really extremely keen to find, to find the culprits. Um, we don't know who did it, but uh, this, is, this is a big problem because uh, obviously Saba is also a touristic uh, pro, uh, destination and this is really bad publicity uh, for, for the country. Now going through the, the solutions. Um, well, one of them is, is, is try to, to increase research on, on uh, agriculture and forest uh, landscape used by wildlife. And this is what I'm doing uh, in, uh, in Sabah. I'm working on different uh, endangered species, like the Bornean elephant, the Bantang, which is a wild cattle that you find in central Sabah, the clouded leopard, the sun bear, proboscis monkey, and, and some other uh, organisms. And to give you an example, I'm using a lot of uh, new technologies, such as uh, satellite coloring and uh, uh, the utilization of uh, camera traps and, uh, and conservation drones. And uh, here we are using uh, satellite uh, to track the movements of, uh, of elephants in uh, certain areas in Sabah. And uh, I want to give you an example of uh, well, kind of conservation in action in Central Sabah Forest Complex. Uh, there is a project here from, uh, which has been started by the UNDP, Jeff, on biodiversity conservation in multiple use forest landscapes in Sabah. And this is the insight from, from researching elephant space use and movements. Um, so in central Sabah, we have uh, uh, several forest reserves here. And uh, we have uh, studied the, the habitat, elephant habitat suitability in these uh, forest reserves. And so all the dark green are high habitat suitability. And there is a, a new project now to uh, to change the landscape, uh, which has been started uh, recently. So we have uh, first <coughs> this old pine plantation, Bentawawasan, which has been set up here, which is, you can see, that it's using uh, some highly suitable habitat for elephants. And then, after what happened with these 14 elephants, I decided to set up a satellite color on the two individuals uh, in the area. This one here and this in the blue. Uh, to follow the movements of the elephants, I try to understand uh, what is happening in this area and try to provide solutions for a better management of, of, of the landscape. So now we have this, this uh, uh, UNDP project, which is starting here, with its a new old palm plantation coming here. And you can see that it's been used by the elephants here. And then we have a new uh, mosaic plantation. It's not a palm oil plantation, it's a new mosaic plantation, which is starting just, it will start, will start soon here and here. As you can see, elephants are using this plantation. And so there will be an increase of conflicts in the future. So what we did with our data, we went to uh, 
to see the director of the Saba Forestry Department that took some manan, who is running this big project. Uh, and we, get, we show him the, the data from the elephants. And uh, so what they decided, because this plan is going to go, it's signed, there's an MOU at the end of the month that will be signed, so it's, it's, it's going to happen. But we have provided some information that maybe we can modify uh, the use of the landscape. And he has agreed, for example, to set up a corridor here for elephants. Uh, following our data. And maybe also to set aside some area here uh, and not transform it in a, in a mosaic plantation. And this is a battle, an ongoing battle that we, we have with, with, uh, with the Saba Forestry Department. So that's just one, one example of, of, of conservation in, in action. And uh, so the, obviously the implications of that forest conversion, there will be a loss of habitat for elephants, about 200,000 hectares. Uh, the conversions are concentrated in highly suitable habitats, so the lowland forest uh, and uh, river valleys tar are targeted for uh, plantations. And so there is be an, in an increased fragmentation of the habitat of, uh, in the elephant range, and therefore an increase of conflict. Now, uh, I'm going to present you a few of the projects that, uh, that I'm running in, in Saba. We are working on this uh, beautiful uh, wild cattle, the Bornean Banteng, which is extremely rare. It's about maybe left 500 individuals in, in, in Saba. And um, our project is uh, essentially founded by the Malaysian Parliament Council. So I approached uh, uh, the, the council, tried to help us uh, working on this, this uh, really elusive and secretive animal, and try to find uh, uh, the best way to, to protect uh, that species. So most recently, we received another uh, large fund funding from uh, the palm oil industry, from the Sime Derby Foundation. Uh, they have this uh, scheme called uh, Big Nine. They provide funding for, it's part of their CSR, uh, social committees, no, corporate social responsibility. And they provide funding for conservation projects. And uh, we applied for a, a large grant to do a wide survey of this uh, banting uh, in Saba. And the major output of this uh, uh, project will be to produce a banting action plan uh, for the state of Saba. And this project is mainly funded by the, the palm oil industry. Uh, we are also starting a Sunda clouded leopard program uh, and trying to map the landscape resistance uh, to identify corridors. Uh, and barriers for clouded leopard in an agricultural forest landscape, which is the Kinabatang and Wallaf sanctuary that I showed you before. And uh, the questions are, can the Borneo felids, well, we have five species of uh, felids in, 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 in Borneo, can they persist in agriculture dominated landscape? And what habitat features may form a barrier to movements? Are these species able to cross plantations, roads, etc.? Well, I'm going to give you a clue because we, about three weeks ago, we managed to set up, a, for the first time ever, a satellite collar on a male Sunda clouded leopard. And uh, we corked him here, somewhere here along the, the river, and which is uh, one of, here, one of the forest fragments along the Kinabatanga. And he traveled about 40 kilometers along the river in this uh, small corridor, this is plantation, and he crossed one of the highest, uh, well, one of the most busy roads in Saba, which is the road from Sandakan to La Haddatu. And he crossed the road, and we thought, oh, he crossed it maybe during the night. He crossed it at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And so, well, we already respond to one of these questions just by using satellite colors, something that, you know, we didn't have a clue before. So yes, they probably can live in such landscape, but we have to keep that landscape. If we transform it in a palm oil plantation uh, along the river, for sure clouded lobar will disappear because they don't use, and we have seen it now with our data, that they don't cross palm oil plantations. So this is extremely important that we keep uh, the forest along the rivers. Uh, and we hope that with this information, we will be able to uh, uh, 
produce a, a, a Sunda Cloud Adopa action plan. And recently we got a, uh, another uh, big nine grant from Sime Derby Foundation, the 1.5 million ringgit, uh, to work on the Cloud of Leopard uh, in, the, in the Kinabatangan. We're also uh, running a, a large work uh, project on the Sun Bear, and looking at home range, habitat use, and also we try to, um, to see whether the species use also the, the palm oil uh, plantations. And so the, the project is uh, run by one of my master students, who is Malaysian. So there is also a part of capacity building in this. Uh, but he's registered at the University of Minnesota. And we are also trying to put uh, satellite colors on, on some wild individuals. And the, uh, the output will be to, to produce a sun bear action plan for, for Sabah. This project is not funded by the palm oil industry. Um, there's a problem with these slides. I don't know, but anyway, there's lots of text behind. Um, the, we are also running a, a large project on the, on the proboscis monkey, which is also funded by the Sam Darby Foundation. Uh, we are looking at uh, the genetic health of the proboscis monkey populations in Sabah, and also looking at effects of fragmentation on their movements uh, in a landscape dominated by agriculture. And I have two PhD students. One is uh, is Malaysian, uh, and then another one is, is Canadian. And she's working on uh, uh, the use of uh, satellite colors here uh, on uh, to look at the, the movements through uh, uh, agriculture-dominated landscape. And we are also using a, a drone. It's these uh, recently invented conservation drones that we can fly both uh, at low altitude to get an accurate map of uh, the vegetation, try to understand how, and then we can plot the, the satellite data here and try to understand how the animal is moving through the landscape. Other solutions, uh, it's to set up wildlife corridors and work with the industry and the government to support uh, and implement uh, the, some wi the wildlife corridors. Uh, I show you in, in previous pictures that some plantations haven't followed the, the, the government laws, and we need to, to, to work with the industry and together with MPOC, MPOB, and trying to recover that land and get it and give it back uh, to wildlife. And this is this is something extremely important. It's not only about giving money from the industry; it's also helping us recovering. Uh, and, and, and repairing some of the mistakes that have been uh, made in the past. So we need to, 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 have, to adopt a landscape-based conservation approach. Uh, we need to address issues of land use practices and forest management, and we need also to hold reservoirs of wildlife until uh, natural processes can be reinstated. And that's why the Kinabatangan wildlife sanctuary where I'm working is extremely important. If this goes, the whole eastern Sabah will be disconnected from the central Sabah. So it is very important to keep these uh, corridors of forest along rivers. And we also should stop further fragmentation and new conversion of forests. We also need a better law enforcement. And uh, the uh, Malaysian Palm Oil Council has uh, helped us setting up a wildlife rescue unit. So this, uh, and actually uh, Shangri-La Razaria, which is also, uh, it's, which is uh, one of the uh, Shangri-La Hotel in, in Sabah, is, is uh, uh, taking part also in the founding of this wildlife rescue unit. And it's a team of about 20, 25 local boys, a couple of uh, local vets, uh, and trying to rescue wildlife that has been uh, injured, uh, so they also take part in um, anti-poaching activities, etc. We have also an honorary wildlife warden program, so there are locals uh, we are working for conservation projects, for example, which are always on, in the field, and they are the eyes of the, the Sabah Wildlife Department. I'm actually also a, a wildlife warden because I spend a lot of time in the forest, and I can arrest uh, poachers or illegal loggers and uh, bring them to, to the police. Ah, 
they took the picture out. <laughs> Uh, another solution is the, the no-kill uh, no policy. And I have to say that uh, in the, in the, in the, it is forbidden in palm oil uh, plantations, and I've read it and I've seen it. It, uh, it is forbidden to, to kill uh, or injure uh, endangered species. The problem is that sometimes the, the, the law is not enforced. It happens sometimes that an animal can be killed in a plantation. And the problem is that most of the time that it is not uh, persecuted. And so that prosecuted. And that's where is the problem. It's not that uh, killing orangutans are allowed in plantations. It's not true. They don't allow it. But it can happen. And uh, we need to have a better uh, uh, prosecution. Um, the other solutions are uh, setting up of a uh, sanctuary to welcome injured animals. And on, for that, the, the, the industry has been helping uh, us, uh, not, notably to set up the Bornean Sunbear Conservation Center, uh, which is run by a local, Wong, and where they're doing research, education, conservation, enforcement, welfare, ecotourism. And it's partly uh, funded by the Sam Darby Foundation. Recently, we set up, we opened the Bornean Elephant uh, Sanctuary in, uh, in Lot 8 of the Lower Kinabatangan Wildlife Sanctuary, and it's uh, mostly founded by the uh, Malaysian Palm Oil Council. And this is not a solution per se, but we have problems with elephants. We've, we, we, we receive and we, we rescue young elephants that have been injured in snares, which are not, you know, coming from plantations. Uh, it's coming from hunters who are trying to get uh, wild boar or deer, but elephants walk in these snares, they are injured, and we need to treat them. So this uh, sanctuary will be helping us to, to, to rescue these animals and hopefully to bring them back to the wild. Sometimes we get orphans as well. And a, a young elephant has been abandoned uh, by, by the group. It happens, and we have no place to put them. We can't re just send them in the forest. So this place we will help. And so the, the Malaysian Palm Oil Council has helped us setting up that uh, sanctuary. And finally, the Borneo Rhino Sanctuary. We, the, the, the rhinos, don't, they won't survive on their own in the forest. That's, that's over. But if we leave them like that, they will, they will get extinct in a few years. So the idea is really pull it, ca trying to catch the last rhinos that we can find in the wild and put them together and try to have them reproduce. So we are working very hard with specialists on rhino reproduction, for like uh, the uh, IZW in Germany, and we set up a, a Borneo Rhino Sanctuary in the Tabin Wildlife Reserve in Eastern Sabah. And Sam Darby Foundation has been funding that project uh, since, this, since its beginning. Other solutions to, go, to work on government policy, uh, draft state action plans, management plans, cabinet papers, and we are working very hard on that. And the great thing is that each time we are organizing stakeholders meeting, we get the, the industry to come. And what is sad is that it's always the same, uh, the same estates or the same plantations that are coming to this meeting and that are interested in what we are doing and that want to help. And namely, Sam Darby Foundation, Sam Darby. They are the first one to come. MPOC, I know it's a, it's a council, but we don't get much interest from plantations like IOI or Wilma or others that have been cited previously. So I, I, hope that, I really hope that in the future, these plantations will also try to start helping us in conservation uh, in the field, on the ground. Uh, ecotourism and uh, good ecotourism when it's well done uh, and when it's controlled and we have clear guidelines not like these ones where pe tourists are taken on land to see the elephants uh, ecotourism can, can be a solution as well and uh, that's why we need to protect our forest and our wildlife it's a real problem with this slide I don't know what's going on anyway uh, and then another solution is, is, is capacity building. Um, and we need to create and to, 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 to get uh, wildlife conservation champions. 
the lo local wildlife conservation champions. And one example is one of my PhD students, uh, Nurza Farina Hosman. She's a young uh, Muslim mother uh, who has embarked in a PhD with me, and she's working in the field studying the Bornean elephant. Yeah. And that woman, uh, I know her since 2005 when she started doing a, a master with me, and then she's now registered at Cardiff University doing her PhD, and she has grown up uh, not only as a mother, but also as a scientist, as a conservationist. She's speaking, she was invited recently at the uh, natural research, uh, natural uh, NRE in uh, in uh, in Peninsula Malaysia, the natural resource and <laughs> sorry anyway yeah the Ministry of uh, uh, Environment in, in in Peninsula Malaysia to talk about elephants uh, to talk about wildlife conservation and I think this is very important that we we really try to train uh, local local Malaysians uh, for conservation. So are we really harmonizing wildlife and biodiversity conservation with national development? Are we doing the right thing? Well, at least we are trying in Sabah. I can say it. I'm based there. I live there and I see it. And I can see that industry, government, research institutions and conservation NGOs try to work together for a better, uh, eco for a better environment in Sabah. So I hope that Saba can be an example uh, for the rest uh, of uh, the world. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to finish with something. <laughs> yes, this one. Sorry. That was my last slide. Uh, I, I'm Belgian and I worked, I did my PhD in France. And uh, I was involved with the, the setting up of the, the Wolf Group in France, Group Lou, and then now it's, uh, it's called Ferus. And um, I found recently that uh, the wolf, there is a new law now that the wolves can be hunted in France. And I just wanted to say that before criticizing other countries and what's going on in, our, in Malaysia, you should also look in your backyard. And two wolves have been recently shot dead. And we haven't seen much pictures, but I'm sure if you put a picture of a, a wolf killed and then an orangutan killed, we will have a lot of you know, noise uh, for the orangutans. And I think this is, the media are playing a big, big role in this. And uh, we, should, we, should, we should be really careful when, when we, we, we read the media. And uh, we should really try to solve uh, our problems before starting to uh, uh, try to solve the others. So yeah, I will finish with this, sorry. Thank you, Dr. Gussens, for that informative um, uh, information on uh, the conservation of wildlife and biodiversity in Malaysia. Si vous avez des questions sur la biodiversité ou la protection de la faune en Malaisie, Dr. Gussens. Merci. Je vais me permettre de vous poser la question en français. Je voulais tout simplement savoir. I want to find out what you think of uh, uh, the uh, uh, chances for there to remain any wild orangutans in 20 years' time, given the extension, the ever extending plantations of palm oil of, or, or palm trees. Et, uh, je... Je pense que ça fait, ça fait maintenant 20, 20 ans, je pense, qu'on qu dit qu'il n'y euh, aura plus de rang autant dans 10 ans. Ça fait 20 ans, 10 ans, il y a 10 ans, il y en avait encore. Aujourd'hui, il y en a encore. On en a peut-être 10 000 en, à Saba et on en a avoir 40, 40, 50 000. Donc, je pense qu'en 10 ans, il y en aura encore et encore. Euh, C'est sûr qu'il y, y, y a des problèmes. Euh, il y a des rang autant qui sont tués. Quand, une, quand, quand des, 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 euh, la forêt est euh, coupée, euh, 
mais je peux parler surtout de, de Saba parce que c'est ça que je connais. Par exemple, euh, au Sepiloc Orangutan Rehabilitation Center, we receive a very few orangutans. Euh, on reçoit très peu de, de orangutans euh, orphelins maintenant. Alors qu'il y a 10 ans, 15 ans, on en recevait beaucoup, peut-être 10-15 par an. Maintenant, un par an. Donc il y a, il y a vraiment une, une diminution euh, de la pression sur, sur, sur les espèces. On, on, on coupe très peu maintenant de, de, de nouvelles forêts à Saba euh, pour, pour des plantations. Et donc, il euh, y, y a un impact euh, sur, sur la, la, la forêt euh, qui, qui n'est plus trop, imp, trop important. Le problème, c'est que parce qu'on a fait des, des, des erreurs au niveau de, 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 la, de la gestion de landscape, euh, on, on, on observe euh, une fragmentation qui est beaucoup plus importante et donc il n'y a pas d'échange entre, entre, entre certaines populations euh, on a aussi la consanguinité qui peut s'installer et donc c'est pour ça qu'on observe certaines populations qui diminuent et pas parce qu'on a, qu a de nouvelles plantations qui s'installent c'est plutôt parce que euh, l'état actuel du landscape qu'on a des populations qui diminuent donc l'idée c'est de, de rétablir des corridors, c'est de rétablir une connexion entre, entre les populations et d'essayer de, 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 de rétablir une certaine stabilité au niveau des écosystèmes. Si on fait ça, je vous garantis que dans 20 ans, on se retrouvera ici et il y aura encore des orangutans. J'en suis persuadé. Les orangutans seront encore sur Bornéo dans 20 ans. Et plus. Des autres questions Bonjour. Bonjour. <rire> en fait, moi, j'avais une question. Est-ce qu'il y a des espèces qui seraient capables de s'adapter dans un nouvel environnement, donc entre autres dans les cultures où se trouvent les palmiers, sans nuire à la production Et euh, c'est pas possible, ça. Très bonne question. Euh, alors, il y, y, y a des espèces qui utilisent les plantations quand elles sont euh, en elles ont atteint une certaine taille, euh, il y a certaines espèces qui vivent dans les plantations. On a des, des, des cochons sauvages, des civettes, euh, certaines espèces de rapaces, euh, les serpents, le, le, le chat léopard. On a des espèces qui vivent dans les plantations et qui les utilisent et qui vont se nourrir des palmes et des, des fruits. Il y en a, on a vu des orangutans. Euh, J'ai un collègue qui travaille, Marc Ancrenas, qui travaille sur des orangutans. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Close the microphone. Uh, we have uh, so so we we, can, we op, on observe des orangutans qui vont dans les plantations et qui qui uh, qui se nourrissent de uh, de fruits. Mais ça ne veut pas dire qu'ils peuvent survivre dans les plantations. Uh, on n'aura jamais une, une une population d'orangutans qui survivra dans une plantation de palmiers à huile. Jamais. Ça n'arrivera jamais. Et euh, pas seulement parce que le manque de biodiversité euh, naturelle et le, le manque de fruits, etc. Mais simplement, tous les 25 ans, la plantation, on est coupée. Ça, I mean, so, euh, ça veut dire que toutes les espèces qui se sont installées là pendant 25 ans, elles vont toutes disparaître ou elles vont être repoussées euh, dans, dans une plantation qui est juste à côté ou là. Donc c'est pas possible, c'est pas possible que des, des organismes puissent survivre sur le long terme dans les plantations de palmiers à huile. Par contre, les plantations de palmiers à huile pourraient être utilisées comme, euh, comme euh, euh, outil de, de, de dispersion. Il y a des espèces qui peuvent traverser une plantation pour aller sur un autre fragment de forêt. Et on l'a vu, on le voit avec nos données satellites. Les éléphants, ils adorent, ils vont dans les plantations, surtout quand elles sont grandes. Euh, donc ils, ils se nourrissent de quelques feuilles ils embêtent pas, ils détruisent pas les arbres donc tout se passe bien mais le problème c'est que quand la plantation est, euh, ne produit plus et qu'elle est coupée et qu'on euh, qu qu replante de nouveaux plants si les éléphants viennent là, ils vont tout détruire ils vont se nourrir des, des, des jeunes pousses donc c'est là que le problème de, euh, recommence donc ce sera un éternel problème tous les 25 ans 
Donc ce n'est pas possible. Ce n'est pas possible pour des, des espèces animales de, de s'adapter et de vivre en permanence dans des plantations. Ce n'est pas possible. 